Okay, you're welcome back. I trust the Lord that God will minister to us as we share the word of God together. Jesus, we pray that you speak to us on the pages of the scripture. We pray that you cause your word to come alive to us today. And you bless every individual, everyone that will listen to your word today. in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to Jesus. So once again, today's Bible study, we are going to be doing a study. In Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 16, it's a very interesting story, and I believe God can encourage us through this story, tell us something about himself and something about how much he cares for you and for me. Uh, I, I like this story so much, and so I wanted to pay out attention because I trust God to speak to us as we look together into this text of the Bible. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 16. I read, soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nine, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. And he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. Jesus gave him back to his mother. Then we are all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. So, our study today will be centered around this text of the Bible. And we trust the Lord to minister to us as we look into this word of life together. We trust the Lord to minister to us as we look into this word of life together. Now, in this story, it's a story that started with sorrow, but that ended with joy. That is what Jesus can do. The moment he steps into somebody's situation, it's going to bring about a turnaround. Jesus is the game changer. Jesus is the destiny changer. Jesus is the one who can turn mess to miracle. Jesus is in the business of doing miracles. Whatever he did in the past, he can do much more now. So let, let's start with the story. The Bible says soon afterward, after what that is referring to here, was an event that took place you know, before the 11th verse of this chapter. Jesus and his disciples had been to a particular town, you know, to, to do ministry and the, the power of God moved mightily through the ministry of Jesus. You know, the sick were healed, the blind saw, the limb walked, mighty miracles happened. And the next line of action was them moving to the town called Nine. So Jesus and his disciples together with the crowd, you know, went along with him to this little town called Nain. Now, now, in this story, we saw, I could imagine what could be the atmosphere around Jesus and his disciples and the crowd that went with him, you know, into the town called Nain. You know, it must have been a very joyous crowd, you know, of people because they were still basking in the euphoria of the miracles of Jesus, of the great things that Jesus did, of the mighty miracles that he wrought, you know, and, and the previous place they've been to. So they were discussing the, the, the mighty works of God, how Jesus healed the sick, how he, he wrought mighty miracles before the people, how he touched life, how he wiped away tears. That was the discussion. They were discussing and they were so jubilant, they were happy. But, but, but as they approached this town, the Bible says as they approached the town, the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. You know, Jesus and the disciple, a joyous crowd was coming into the town of Nain, and a dead person was, was being carried out, out of the town to be buried. Now, listen to this. In this story, we saw a couple of meetings that took place. So I'm going to be highlighting some of these meetings in this story, and I wanted to pay up attention because this meeting, you know, one after the other, we actually ultimately lead to the miracle 
you know, that was recorded in this text. Now, the first meeting in this story was the meeting of two crowds. The first crowd were the crowd of Jesus' disciples and the crowd that followed him. They've seen the miracles of Jesus Christ and the place he was coming from. That was at Capernaum. They've seen his miracles. I will heal the sick. I wrote mighty miracles. I touched lives. I will wipe away tears. And they were still basking in the furia of this wonderful experience of God's power. We were discussing the power of God, the majesty of Jesus. I did mighty works before the people. They were actually jubilating. They were joyous. They were full of joy. But guess what? On the other side of the coin, you know, was a crowd of mourners that followed the woman that was about to bury her only son. So these two crowd met together. That was the first meeting in this story. The crowd, a joyful crowd that followed Jesus and the crowd of mourners. That was the first crowd. That was the first meeting that took place in this story. That, that, but that, that's not the only you know, the meeting that took place in this story. Let's say the second meeting that took place, you know, that happened in this, in this story. The second meeting was the meeting of two sons. The first son, Jesus Christ, was the only begotten of the father. And the second son was the only begotten of his mother. Now, in this case, the first son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of his father, was alive but destined to die. And the second son, the only begotten of his mother, was dead but destined to live by his encounter with Jesus Christ. What a meeting. What a meeting. So remember the first meeting again was the meeting of two crowd, the crowd that were following Jesus Christ, a very joyful crowd. They seen the miracle of Jesus Christ in name, I mean in Capernaum, and they were, were still basking in the euphoria of these miracles. Now as they approached the town of Nine, they approached, they, they, they met with another crowd, a crowd of mourners. They were so sorrowful. They were mourning the death of this young boy that was about to be buried. So that was the second meeting. Now, now before we go ahead, now the woman in this story, a situation... So it was such a very difficult situation for this woman. This woman had earlier buried her husband, and the, the only hope she had, she had buried her husband. Now, in this case, she was left with a son after the death of her husband. But now, the son that survived the husband, that could have, that, that was the primogeniture of the family, the son that could have been, you know, a, a defense in the future, that could have been a provider in the future, died, and it was was about to be buried. This woman you know, had experienced you know, a, a difficult situation in life because I, 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 can, I, I can imagine what, what would be going on in her mind. She would remember the pains, the labor of parenting, how she would wake up at night trying to rock a baby to sleep when the boy was a little baby, trying to seek lullaby for the baby to sleep, changing the diaper, you know, that sometimes the baby will fall sick and the baby will have sleepless nights. And guess what? If my parents must have understood that, and many times when our kids, you know, are, are, are restless, many times we, we, we also feel the same with them. Many times when our kids are sick, it's as though we are sick too. So this woman, all of these things began to come to her mind as she was ready to bury her only son. Oh, she had no thought of a miracle at all. Because just the same way her son was about to be buried, her husband had been buried earlier. And no miracle brought her husband back to life. So for her, it was a hopeless situation for her. She wasn't expecting a miracle whatsoever. Nobody promised her that a miracle is going to happen. Nobody promised her that that was not the end of the situation for her. Nobody encouraged her that don't worry, your son will come back to life. She even had no thought of Jesus Christ. She didn't know she was going to meet with Jesus Christ that very day. This woman had given up. This woman had, had accepted her faith. But this woman was full of sorrow. And that takes me to the next meeting that took place in this story, remember the first meeting, the meeting of two crowds, the crowd that followed Jesus Christ, a joyful crowd, and the crowd of mourners that followed this woman to the place where a son would be buried. The second meeting that took place was the meeting of two sons, a son, a living son, the only begotten of his father, Jesus Christ, don't leave him, but was destined to die. And then the dead son, the only begotten of his mother, though dead, but destined to live 
oh glory to Jesus, was destined to live again by his encounter with Jesus Christ. Now that takes us to the next meeting, it was the meeting of two sorrowful people. The Bible tells me two people were acquainted with sorrows in this, in, in, in the sorrow in this story. The Bible tells me that Jesus Christ was a man of, of grief, or a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. And that was the situation of this woman as well. This woman had had a fair share of, of, of pains, of struggles. This woman had buried her husband. And in the nation of Israel, there was no welfare packet for widows. So she has been living in, in despondency. She had been living in an abject poverty because, and, and the only support, the only hope she had was one day her son would grow up I have to take out of the city. I can imagine the son promising a, 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 his mom, a mom, don't worry. We are not going to be like this forever. Someday I will grow up. I will make it. I will take it to the city to live with me. Someday I'm going to get married. You see my, 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 my children. You carry your children's children. You know, someday, you know, I, 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 will, I will clothe you. Someday you don't have to walk in, and, 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 and be clothed in rags. Someday our story will change. This boy had been the hope, the only hope that this woman had. But now the son of this woman was dead and was ready to be buried. So this woman was a woman of sorrow acquainted with grief. But that's the same way Isaiah described Jesus Christ. He said, a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. No wonder the Bible says we do not have a, a high priest or we cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus Christ feels your pains, just by showing solidarity to also to our pains. You know, it felt the pains that we feel. He had been dear, he was rejected. At some point, he experienced weakness. At some point, he experienced rejection. At some point, he was disbelieved. At some point, he was charged, he was, he was, he was you know, wrongly accused and several other things happened to him. He faced several temptations. And, and, and finally, it was near to the cross, the effects, the pains, and the agony of the cross. So the Bible says to us that even the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him because he was, he was beaten for our, for our sake. Jesus Christ went through all of these pains for our sake. So the Bible calls him a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. So we saw the three, the, the third meeting, the meeting of two sorrowful people, two people that were acquainted, you know, with, with grief and sorrow, the woman and Jesus Christ. But guess what? Look at what happened in this story. Now, as, as the crowd of mourners were behind this woman that was ready to bury her only son, and as they were approaching Jesus Christ, this woman had no thoughts of who Jesus Christ was in this story, so obvious. Jesus, this woman had not thought of who Jesus Christ was, never knew that he was, she was about to encounter a mighty man. She was about to encounter the, 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 the living word of God himself, was about to encounter the destiny change that he was about to encounter, you know, the, the miracle worker, the very life himself. But guess what? The Bible tells me that when the Lord saw her, his heart went out for her. Wow, I like that. This woman was not the one who invited Jesus Christ into a situation. I, 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 I assume, and I guess she even didn't have you know, knowledge of who Jesus Christ was. She had not met Jesus Christ before. She didn't know how powerful Jesus Christ was. She didn't know what Jesus Christ was capable of doing. She didn't invite Jesus Christ. She didn't call Jesus Christ into her affairs. She was full of sorrow. Her heart was filled with sorrow and pain. Her face was like the reprint of the book of Lamentations. But guess what? She didn't see Jesus Christ. Jesus saw her. Wow, that is what mercy and grace can do. The eyes of mercy and grace can see us afar. Even where we can't even sight Jesus, the eyes of Jesus' mercy and grace can see us from afar. The eyes of mercy and grace, you know, saw this woman. When this woman was not looking for Jesus Christ, Jesus saw her. And the Bible says his heart went out for her. Jesus was compassionate. Wow. Was full of compassion. Sometimes, you know, we, 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 this kind of situation describes some of us. Sometimes we are confronting situations and it seems all hell is breaking loose around us. Sometimes our pillows are soaked with tears night after night. 
sometimes we've even lost the energy and, and, and the zeal and enthusiasm to serve God and even to pray to worship because it seems we have exhausted all our options. We've turned to the right, there was no way to go, we've turned to the left, no way, we've turned to the front and to the back. There seems to be no way whatsoever. And we feel so perplexed, so confused, not knowing what to do. I'm glad to tell you that mercy is available, grace is available. The Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, the Bible says, let us then come boldly to the throne of grace. Now we obtain mercy and find grace to every time of me. I like that so much. Come to the throne of grace, not in your righteousness, not by your own righteousness or by your own holiness, but by the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Come boldly to the throne of grace. In this throne, Jesus Christ of God does not dispense judgment. He only dispenses grace and mercy. Come to obtain mercy and find grace to help you in time of need. But the eyes of mercy and grace can see us from afar. Even when we are not looking for Jesus Christ, the eyes of mercy and grace reaches out, you know, to the, to, to, to the lowest of us, reaches out to us. The eyes of mercy and grace can see us clearly and can see us afar. And, and the, 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 the eyes of grace and mercy will actually go after us. Jesus Christ went after this woman. The old man was not asking, was not seeking for Jesus. Jesus sought for her. That is what grace and mercy can do. That's something about Jesus Christ is so compassionate, is so loving, is full of mercy, full of grace. Oh, it's full of truth. Jesus Christ wants to step into your situation as well, like he did for this woman. So Jesus Christ said, don't cry. I don't know, perhaps you have been crying, you have been willing, you have been troubled, you have been worried. Jesus is saying to you, don't cry. People may endure, but it's for the night. Joy comes in the morning, the Bible says, don't cry. Jesus is about to wipe away your tears. He's about to step into your situation and give you a turn around. He can turn your mess to miracle. It seems you are surrounded by enemies. It seems you are surrounded with, with things that are undesirable. Jesus Christ can step in. If you can call him in right now, he's going to step in and turn your mess to miracle and give you a new beginning. So Jesus is saying to you, like, Jesus, like he said to that woman, don't cry like that. Oh, that word gives me uh, 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 gives my heart joy. You know, that, that word makes, you know, gives me a comfort. I like what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. And like the way particular portion of the Bible puts it, he said, put the loads of your anxiety on him for you are his personal concern. I like that. I'm so glad to know that I am God's personal concern. So, and that's who you are, you are God's personal concern. So he's saying to you, don't cry. Wipe away your tears. Don't cry because Jesus Christ is about to step in, to take over the will, take over the situation, and give you a turnaround. So he said, don't cry. Don't cry. You may have been weeping and crying, you know, because of your children, over your family, over your husband, over your wife, over your business, over your health. Jesus Christ, over your head, Jesus Christ telling you, don't cry. Don't cry. Then the Bible tells me the next line, then it went up and touched the coffin. So great. But there's something about the touch of Jesus Christ. There's something about touching him as well. But whichever way, whatever, whatever comes first, if you touch him, it's going to be miraculous. If it touches you, it's going to be miraculous as well. So all that you need to do is to make sure that there is a touch between you and him, you must have a meeting with him. Wow. Remember the first meeting, meeting of a joyous crowd with a crowd of mourners that met together, the meeting of two sons, begotten of, of, of the father, the son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the father, the second son, the only begotten of his mother, the first son, Jesus Christ, was alive but destined to die, the second one dead but destined to live again through his encounter with Jesus Christ. And we saw the third meeting, the meeting, of two people that were acquainted with grief and sorrow, Jesus Christ and the woman. And Jesus Christ is telling, told the woman, don't cry. And we saw the next thing that happened, Jesus Christ, Bible says, went up and touched the coffin. And sometimes the devil had thought they, they won the battle over us. They thought they pushed us into the coffin and they seen the end of our lives, of, of our dreams. And they, 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 are, they are ready to go and bury our dream somewhere and to say, never will this dream or dream come to pass. 
and they said in their heart, mercy was going to become of the stream. I'm glad to tell you today, Jesus Christ is about to give you a touch. He's about to give you a touch. He said, the Bible says, then he went up and touched the coffin. You are lying to touch your own situation as well. You are lying to breathe life into what seems to be dead in your life. We you allow him to touch your body and give you healing. We we'll allow him to touch your ministry, touch your destiny, touch your, your children, touch the lives of, of your children, touch your spouse, touch your business, and give it a turn around. All that you need is a touch from Jesus Christ. If he touches you, it is a miracle. And if you touch him, it's a miracle as well. So Jesus Christ touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still because power oozed out from that touch. There was power that flowed from the touch of Jesus Christ. So the moment Jesus touches you, power flows, solution flows, you know, you know, God with life, with every touch of God, there is life, the life of God flows along with the touch of God. So Jesus Christ touched the coffin and those carry, carrying it stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, get all. I like that, what a command. Get all. Sometimes you have buried your head in shame. Perhaps you have buried your head in shame. You have given up on God. You have given up on your dreams. They've told you your dreams will never come true. You've tried and you've tried. And it seems all that you've experienced are, are, are just disappointment and failures. I'm glad to tell you. Now, in our contest, in, with, 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 in life sometimes, in our struggles to rise sometimes, sometimes life gives us some punches, but glory be to God, you may have been knocked down in your, in, in your fight, but thank God that you are not knocked out, you can rise again. Champions are not those who have not received punches before, but they keep rising, they keep rising again. Champions are not those who have not sustained injury at any point, but they go to God for strength and their strength are renewed. The Bible says, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as they shall run, they shall not be weary, they shall walk and they shall not faint. Glory to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is telling you to rise up, get up. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on, your, on, on, on yourself. Don't give up on your health. I can give you a turnaround. So Jesus Christ told the dead guy, said, rise up. Get up. A command. Standing with the same thing, get up. The Bible says the dead man sat up and began to talk. Your dreams will speak again. Your vision will speak again. The ministry will speak again. That's what Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gave him back to his mother. The Bible says they were filled with joy and praised God. And the said is about Jesus Christ. They said, a great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. I see help coming your way. I see Jesus Christ stepping into your situation this minute. I see him touching you and giving you a turnaround. So wherever you are right now listening to me, perhaps you have been living, you know, with one struggle or the other, you have been living in pain. Jesus Christ wants to give you a touch and will bring about a turnaround. But before I pray for you, if you are here to give your life to Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do so now. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you make this decision, you come into a meeting with Jesus Christ. Remember these four meetings in this story. The first meeting was the meeting of two crowds. The crowd of, 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 of Jesus, that followed Jesus Christ, the jubilant crowd, the joyous crowd that met with the crowd of mourners. Then the second meeting was a meeting between two sons, that Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the father, the son that was about to be buried, that, that guy was about to be buried, the only begotten of his mother. And but one son was alive, but destined to die. That was, that was Jesus Christ. And the other son was dead already, but destined to live his encounter, his meeting with Jesus Christ. And we see the, the next you know, meeting that took place in this meeting, in this story, you know, the meeting of two people acquainted with sorrows and grief, the meeting of Jesus with the woman. And we saw the last meeting that took place in this story. There's a story between death and life, the meeting between death and life. Life came face to face with death, and death was swallowed up in victory. 
But the Bible says it was impossible for grief to hold its grip on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is life. It's our life. It's not just a give out of life. He is our life. It's not just a give out of hope. He is our hope. It's not just a give out of peace. He is our peace. He is everything to us. He is our strength. He is our life. The Bible calls him, is just Christ says of himself. He said, I am the way, the, the way, the truth, and the life. So, so we saw the last meeting that took place in this story, the meeting between life and death. Death thought he had won the victory over this boy, but Jesus, the very life, stepped in and he took power from death, delivered this boy, rescued him from the jaw and the clung of death, and he swallowed up death in victory, and he gave death a punch, and won over death and rescued this boy from the power of the grave. Glory to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, thanks be to God. He has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. has given us the Glory to Jesus. So as we run off, we've seen the four meetings. So I, I want you to so I enjoy you to also come into a meeting with Jesus Christ today. If you are yet to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm inviting you for a meeting with Jesus Christ, a meeting that will give you a turnaround, that will turn the situation around and give you a new beginning. So if you are yet to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to say with me right now, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. I have received your word. Jesus, today I repent of all my sins. And I ask that you forgive me all my sins. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me with your precious blood. I believe you are the son of God. And I believe you came to die for me. I confess with my mouth as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart to stay. Write my name in the book of life. Bless me with your Holy Spirit. And give me a new beginning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now I'm going to pray for you. If you are sick in your body, if you trust the Lord for a touch, for you trust the Lord for him to give you a turn around, you trust him for a miracle, just trust him right now. Trust him for a trust, trust him to give you a turn around as I'm going to pray. Jesus, right, we thank you for everyone listening right now from any part of the world. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your healing power flow through the sick, you know, into the sick right now in Jesus. Let that be healing for the sick. If anyone trusting you for one miracle, one breakthrough or the other, when I step into their situations and bring about a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Father, God Almighty, I pray that you wipe away all tears in the name of Jesus. Give your people a new beginning, a turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ. I revoke sickness, I revoke infirmity, I revoke pains in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare your emancipation, I declare your release from captivity, I declare your release from the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare you healed from all your sicknesses. I declare that whatever that has gone dead in your life that ought to be living, I speak life to them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for listening to me. Once again, my name is Ebenezer Fulabi. Until I come your way next week, remain sandwiched between the peace of God and the God of peace. Thank you. God bless you. Shalom.